What's up folks? Today I want to talk about my W221 S550 Formatic. I just did a engine change. Um, this is my old engine here. So the problem I was having was I was getting a misfire on cylinder 3. And uh, I ended up doing a compression test on it. And cylinder 3, front of the engine, so cylinder 3 would be this guy here. Um, ended up having low compression, about 35 psi lower than the rest of the cylinders. And it was burning a pretty good amount of oil from that. So I took the cylinder head off, thinking that the problem was up top. And I kind of got happy when I saw that this exhaust valve was basically sunk in a lot more than the rest of them. As you can see, this guy here. So I was happy that all I had to do was just find a used cylinder head and, you know, call it a day. But then I started looking deeper into the engine and I found out there's major scoring on the cylinder wall here on cylinder three. As you can see here. It's pretty bad. So it was a combination of things that that's why the misfire was happening. So I ended up pulling the entire engine out. I did not want to go ahead and rebuild it. I couldn't really find any oversized pistons. And uh, I quite, quite frankly, I didn't want to go through the process of having to rebuild this engine, which probably would cost me more than sourcing out a used engine with about half of the miles. By the way, this, this car has about 209,000 miles, but the body is very clean. There's no rust. Um, it's in pretty good shape. So I ended up changing the engine out right in my garage. The engine came out from the top. Unfortunately, I didn't film the process of it. But while I had the engine out, I ended up replacing just about everything up front. So water pump, tensioner, belt, um, the uh, oil filter housing gaskets, oil, oil cooler gasket. Uh, I put a new O-ring on the power steering pump to the reservoir. Um, all the O-rings to the coolant hoses are new, new thermostat. And I also did new motor mounts. I did the side mounts and also the transmission mount while I was at it. Just because if you know anything about these formatics, they're a pain in the ass to do the side mounts. And let me tell you, these mounts are hydraulic mounts, so they when they when they go, you can feel every vibration in the body of the vehicle. But with these new ones, you don't feel anything at all. So it's definitely worth doing them if you can. As you can see, new mounts. So this engine ended up being a good engine. I was worried about it because, you know, the uh, the book says that you can go 10,000 miles between oil changes, and that's just ridiculous, in my opinion. Once that oil breaks down or, or basically collects all kinds of dirt, just the lubrication on it is not the same. And that kind of stuff happens like the uh, cylinder scoring on my old engine so that's that um, like I said so far so good the engine came out of the top fairly easy process the only thing I had a hard time with was the uh, front drive shaft to the front differential that was not easy but uh, I got it done 
everything is in properly the engine runs very very well i'm gonna go ahead and start it up so you can hear it um So the vehicle's got 209,000 miles on it. Again, it's in very, very good shape. And I love this car. So I thought it was worth fixing it. And I'm glad I did. But these cars are not for everybody. I mean, if you're not handy, I'm a technician. So I can, I did everything myself. But if you're not, tech savvy with these things ah, it's I wouldn't recommend you owning one uh, I mean I can go on and on about things I've changed on it this kind of miles like the two front struts air struts they both need to be changed one of them yeah the joint went on it because the boot was ripped and even though I try to Keep it greased up it had a lot of play on it so i had to replace that the other one started leaking um so i had to replace that too so both front struts been done the rears thank god i haven't had to replace those yet um the aromatics compressor went on it so i had to replace that but that's that's kind of a known issue for these What else have I had to replace? Um, I had to replace, on the old engine, I had to do the, uh, the oil cooler gasket and also the oil housing gasket, which is deeper in there. They're, they're known to leak over time. That's kind of normal as well. Um, I mean, other than that, other than the air struts, it's about the same amount of maintenance, I would say, as like an E-Class, you know? Other than having two extra cylinders on a V8, there's not much difference from this than an E-Class, like an E350, same year. So, um, the body's in really, really good shape on this vehicle, as you can tell. We've got new brakes on it. AMG rims. So I love the car. I mean, I absolutely love the way it rides and everything else. Another thing I've done to this car is I have lowered it just a hair. And how you do that with the Airmatic is very, very easy. You basically just add a washer to the leveling sensors I'll show you in just a second just get my light I don't know where I put my light So, I lowered it about half an inch all the way around. It rides a bit sportier, which I love, and it just looks a lot better than stock ride height. So what you want to do is, if you can see there, the uh, that small rod that is hooked up to the upper control arm, you can actually see the washer in between there. I added a one millimeter washer on both sides 
which then lowers the vehicle about half an inch. Now in the rear, there's only one sensor. You can't really see it, but the leveling sensor in the rear, you just bend the bracket a little bit to lower the rear. So I have a car sitting about a half an inch lower than stock ride height. Plus I have it on sport mode, which lowers it another half an inch automatically once you put it on S mode versus comfort. I don't know if you guys knew that. Um, so S mode, what it does is it lowers the car about half an inch and you start on first gear from a dead stop versus in comfort, it keeps it about half an inch higher and you start on second gear from a dead stop. So I've got this car that's almost a 5,000 5, pound vehicle drive like, like it's a C-Class. And if you have one of these, that is one upgrade that's so easy to do with just two washers that I don't know why you wouldn't do it. So I'm kind of happy with the results with this new engine that I got. It runs very, very well. I did new plugs, gaskets, all that stuff like I just mentioned earlier. Um, and yeah, I'm happy, I'm very happy. My next upgrade is going to be the, uh, the LED bulbs. So basically I'm going to convert from HID to LED. I believe it's crisper looking brighter and a little bit more modern um, this vehicle has three bulbs ma major bulbs on each each headlight one is for cornering when you turn the wheel left this illuminates this is high beam and this is low beam I'm actually going to replace all these three with LEDs I've already done the LED fog lights and I love them so that's gonna be next I'm gonna make a video about that too but yeah so this is my s550 and unfortunately if you guys do have a misfire don't just keep throwing coils and spark plugs at it do a compression test unfortunately you might not like the results but reality is these things they tell you uh, when they first sell these cars new, the salesman tells the buyer that they can go 10,000 miles between oil changes, which is absolutely insane. That oil breaks down, or if it doesn't break down, it collects all kinds of dirt from the combustion of the engine that uh, you're just circulating dirt inside the engine and just catastrophic failure can happen. Although mine has pretty high miles, so I can't really say that, you know, it could happen like real soon. But if you want this, this engines can run forever. If you just change the oil about four to 5,000 miles. So, oh, another thing I had to replace was my, uh, my sound amplifier, which was a pretty high, uh, pretty expensive ticket they go for about 1400 bucks from the from the dealer they're used by 800 and I you know at that point why would I want to buy a used one and have it fail a couple months down the road so I went and bought a brand new one $1,400 so my sound is good um, what else goes on these cars other than the air struts there's not much else to them, you know? Other than like a 350, there's not much difference other than two extra cylinders. Everything else is about the same, especially on these 273 engines versus the 272, which is the same engine on a six cylinder. I have this plastic trim off. I'm gonna actually paint them um, and then put them back just to make it look a little cleaner. But yeah, other than that, this engine is super smooth, runs beautiful. 
fires on all eight cylinders. I'm just happy with it. <laughs> 